In this video, we're gonna be creating a real-time image generation and editing app using Next.js, Fal AI, and what's known as a latent consistency model, or LCM. LCMs have been all the rage the past week or two in the AI and ML communities because they enable a 10 to 20x improvement in speed for text to image generation or natural language to image generation. So this is an order of magnitude speed improvement over what was possible in the past, and therefore it opens up a lot of use cases that were just not possible in the past. And in addition to that, FAL has created and released an SDK that uses WebSockets that connects to their API that enables these types of applications to be built a lot simpler than if you had to actually manually build these from scratch. So we're gonna be using their client along with their API, along with Next.js to build an app in around 10 to 15 minutes. So to understand the types of applications that are possible, let's take a look at a couple of the examples that have been shared on social media over the past week. So here we have an example of someone that's doing a video to image generation in real time. So as they move around, it's kind of creating this AI generated image. And you can see as he's moving around, the image changes, which is really cool. Here we have someone that's created this application where they're kind of drawing. And as they're drawing, the updates are happening in real time. And the canvas is kind of overlaid on top of the image that's being generated. And it's really cool how they've uh, he's done this. This example here is actually what we're gonna be building. And this uses Excaladraw along with a text prompt to generate images and move them around and modify them and kind of see them changing in real time, which is pretty cool. Um, next, we have this example of someone that's created a game, a game canvas. And as they move the canvas around, you see that the image being generated on the right, the output is changing in real time as well. Here we have someone that's created a, a Chrome extension or some type of extension for their browser that takes a regular video and turns it into an AI video. And then uh, here we have another example of someone that's doing a video to AI video. And here we have someone who's modifying their design in real time and creating this cartoon-like output, which is pretty cool. So now that we've gone over some of the examples of what you can build, what we wanna do is go ahead and create a new Next.js app and start writing some code. So let's jump into our terminal. Here in my terminal, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new Next.js application. We'll use TypeScript, ESLint, Tailwind, no to the SRC directory, yes to the app router. We'll go ahead and change into this new directory, open it up and our text editor here. All right, now that we've uh, generated the projects and we're in our new directory, let's go ahead and install the dependencies that we're gonna need. So we're gonna be using Excaladraw. So we'll go ahead and install Excaladraw. We're also going to be using the Fal AI serverless client along with the Fal AI serverless proxy. The serverless proxy is just a really simple way for us to be able to not have to create our routes with environment variables and kind of set all that up. It kind of does all that for us, therefore um, allowing us to securely store our, our um, API key and not expose it to the client. All right, so we've installed that. The next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and create the API route. So I'm gonna go into the app directory, create a new folder here called API. And then within that folder, we're gonna create a new folder called FAL. Within that, we're gonna create a new route called proxy. And then here, we're just gonna go ahead and create a new file called route.ts. And within that route file, we're gonna be doing something extremely simple. The only thing we're gonna be needing to do is import route from the serverless proxy, and we're gonna export the get and the post methods from the route, and that's all we have to do. Everything else will work. We can just point to this proxy when we configure file, which will make a lot of sense in just a moment. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and create a new environment variable in our .env local file. And this is going to be where we store our file API key. So I'll, we'll call this fal underscore key. And we need to go ahead and go into the file dashboard here at file.ai slash dashboard. 
and create an account if you don't already have one. Here I'm gonna grab a key and I'll go ahead and create a new one for this. And I'll just delete this later and I'll copy this to my clipboard, drop this here. So now we've configured our environment variable and we can move on. Going back though to the dashboard, here in the model registry, you can kind of see all of the different models that are available through their API. The model that we're using is still super new. So it's not listed here. And in fact, it's probably not even something that you would want to ship to production right this second. Keep an eye out there. They're going to be making a turbo API like this available very soon. But for the uh, use of this tutorial, you're welcome to use it. Uh, you can play around with it and you should be able to build along with me today. If for, if for whatever reason you're watching this video in the far future, you can go here and find the connection uh, string, which would be something like here in the API documentation would be this first argument um, to grab whatever real-time model that might be listed in the future. But for now, just follow along with the model that I'm using. Okay, so we've set up everything. The only thing we need to do now is just go ahead and create the app. So in the app slash page directory, I'm sorry, app slash page file, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this code here. And I'll just set up some padding on this main element here. And we can then start importing the specific imports that we need for our app. And the first thing we wanna do is just turn this into a client component because we're going to be using use state from React. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and import the Excala Draw APIs that we're gonna need. So we have Excala Draw, we have export to blob, which will allow us to export our canvas to an image. And then we have serialize as JSON, which is what we're gonna be using in just a moment to compare the canvas as it's updated to only update when the canvas is changed. Next, we're gonna import the file APIs here. So we're gonna import all as FAL from file AI slash serverless client. And those are all the imports that we need. Next, we can go ahead and configure file to use our proxy. So I can set this proxy URL value as the API route that we just created here, API slash file slash proxy should resemble this here. And then finally, before we write our client code for the main component, we're gonna create two variables. One is gonna be a randomly generated number, which is gonna be the seed that we're gonna be sending to file for a consistent image output. This can be any consistent random number that you would like. And then we're setting some base arguments. You can go to their documentation or maybe look into the client by clicking here on file and kind of like seeing the different arguments that you can pass in and playing around with those. This should be a good base to start with though, setting the sync mode to true and shrink uh, to this number 0.99. Okay, cool. So what we can now do is go here to this home component and go ahead and create some local state. The first thing we want to do is have some input for the user to type in for the prompt. So we're gonna start with an input and a set input for use state. And I'm gonna start off with a base prompt that is a cinematic shot of a baby raccoon wearing an intricate Italian priest robe. You can make this whatever you want. This is just a good way to start off with something. Next, we're going to have a image and a set image function. This image is going to be updated as the image comes back from the file API. Next, we're gonna have a few Excaladraw specific pieces of state. One is gonna be the scene data, and this is gonna be what we're gonna to use to contrast when the scene indeed changes, so we can then send new requests to the file API. And then we're gonna also set the Excaladraw state here using um, Excaladraw API and use, I'm sorry, and then set Excaladraw API. And then finally, we have the app state coming from Excaladraw that we're gonna store also locally so we can then generate the image using the uh, app state from Excaladraw. So those are the three main pieces of state that we're gonna be keeping up with. 
we're going to create two functions. One is just going to be the send function that is returned by calling foul.realtime.connect. The first argument here is going to be the model that we're going to be using. Again, this model can be interchanged to whatever real-time turbo model that you would like to use that supports WebSockets. For this tutorial, you can use this one. If you come back a month, a year later, and this doesn't work for whatever reason, just go to their documentation and grab a different uh, real-time model. Um, we're going to set a unique con connection key, whatever this is you would like. And then we have this on result uh, handler. And this will be what is returned after the update is, is, is kind of sent back to us in the WebSockets. So I'm going to be calling send, passing in some args, whatever that is. And then that is going to send the values. And then when the, res the result comes back, we're going to call set image, which hopefully will have an image sent back. And then we can render that image. Next, we're going to have a function for getting the data URL from the current state of Excaladraw. So we're going to be taking in an argument of app state that will be set to the current value of app state. So uh, we're going to be invoking this when the user types, but we're also going to be passing the app state indirectly. So we're just going to have a default um, argument here just in case the app state is not passed in. And then we're going to go ahead and populate this here. We're going to uh, use Excaladraw.getScenElements. We're going to check to see if the elements exist. If they do not, we return. We're going to go ahead and create a blob using the export to blob um, helper from Excaladraw, passing in the app state and the elements are the two main things along with a, a little bit of um, additional config. And then we return the blob as a data URL. And now we can just call this anytime we need the data URL. And that's really it on the functions that we need. Now we can go here into our UI and build this out. The first thing I might drop in is like a title. Here I'll just call this out foul SDXL turbo. We're also going to drop in an input. This is going to be when the user types in the prompt. Um, we only have an on change handler here. That is kind of the main thing I would call out. It will first update the local state for the input. It will then fetch a new data URL, and then it will send the update to the API. So anytime the user types, we're sending a new value combining the prompt along with the current data URL or the current canvas drawing. Next, we'll go ahead and create a couple of divs here. And this is going to hold our Excaladraw canvas along with the image that is rendered. So I'm going to start by dropping Excaladraw right there. This is going to take two props in our case. The first is the Excaladraw API. And this will invoke and then set the Excaladraw API locally in our state. And then we have this pretty long on change handler. The on change handler here is going to first get a current representation of the scene. It will check to see if the scene has changed. And if it has not, it will not do anything. If it has changed, then this is where we send a new update to file. We set the app state, we set the scene data, we get a new data URL, we send the data URL along with the prompt. And this will trigger a new update once the value comes back from the WebSocket connection. And the last thing we have to do is we render the image. So if the image exists, we render the image, we set the source, the width, and the height. And we can now go ahead and test this out. So I'm going to go to my terminal, and we're going to run npm run dev. All right, so our app is running. As you can see, we have this black background. I might just go ahead and open the global CSS and remove that dark theme. So now we have a light theme. Looks a little 
uh, more consistent. So let's test this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing. So I'm gonna set the background as like a dark gray. I'll go ahead and start this. And as you can see, we start seeing some output already. I'm going to then draw a kind of circle shape here. And as you can see, as I'm moving this around, we're getting that update happening in real time, which is pretty cool. What I might do just to, to make sure the on change handler is working, maybe a cinematic shot of a Christmas tree. That's working pretty good too. So everything is working, awesome. The one other thing I wanna show you real quick is this logic here on the on change handler while we're checking here. The reason is this on change gets triggered every time a cursor is moved on top of the canvas. So to show you that, I can just say, so I can just console.log change anytime that happens. And you'll see as I'm doing this, we have 100, 200 now, 300 change events triggered. But if I move the log here, the only time this will trigger, so no more triggering here, the only time it's gonna trigger is if I actually draw onto the canvas. Awesome. And you might notice here we're getting this warning that is Next.js specific. And if we kind of scroll down here, we'll see that it has something to do with the dynamic width and height. So we're not gonna debug that right this second, but um, should be hopefully a somewhat simple fix. So that's it. Thank you for checking out this video. If you like it, please comment, share, like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. All the links should be in the comments, the code base, the different examples that I shared from Twitter, along with the file documentation and the file website. So thank you for checking this video out. Keep an eye out for my next one, hopefully soon, thanks.